In this video, we will learn about the most common type of structure built while over, that is bulk active structure. Though there are four different types. This video is from Lodi Design Lab, School of Design, Art, Architecture, Planning, Consulting and Research. In this video, we will learn about the most common type of structure built while over that is bulk active structure though there are four different types of rigid structure but we will learn them in separate videos before we move on to bulk active structure let's understand what is called rigid structure rigid structures pertaining to a structure or structural member having a shape that doesn't change appreciably under the action on an applied load. This is also termed as moment frame systems and it consists of linear element like beams and columns. The word rigid means ability to resist the deformation. It must act as load resisting skeleton and its skeletons must resist movement. Its members must take bending moment, shear force and axial loads. In other words, its frame connections are fixed at particular angles that do not change or do not change over the period of time. Structural analysis method such as the portal approximation method, the method of virtual work, Castigliano's theorem method, force method, and the slope displacement method or the stiffness method, matrix analysis. These can be used to solve the internal forces, moments, and support reactions in any rigid structure. It is divided mainly in two categories. One is RCC rigid structure to which we will be discussing here. Remember all horizontal structures, beams and slabs and vertical structural members such as columns are built monolithically by reinforced cement concrete that is RCC. Here the walls are constructed for partition purposes only and the load is transferred to the foundation through the beams and columns. During the construction of its different structural members, reinforcement of one member is tied with another member so that all the structural members are fixed with one another. And the other is rigid framed steel structure. Steel framework of columns and beams that form a structure creates large interior space that can be utilized for nearly any application. Rigid steel frame buildings are used as sports venues, manufacturing facilities, warehouses, retail stores and gymnasiums. It can be single span buildings. Single span buildings have a solitary end to end framework that requires no internal columns and can span up to 120 feet in width. It can be used for aircraft hangars. Multi span frames require a width of more than 120 feet. Also called a post and beam structure, the framework consists of internal columns that support the beams. It is used for warehouse, sports stadiums, etc. So we can understand that steel frame structure or the rigid steel frame structure can be single span or it can be multi span. Bulk active structure, a structure or structural member that redirects external forces primarily through the bulk and continuity of its material as a beam or column. So the elements of bulk active structure 
could be walls, columns, slab and the beam. This sketch is shown here, the very basic sketch for the bulk active structure. So in the next slide, what we are going to see is the first statement about it. Linear structure that is the columns or the beams do not bend and they reduce the load in the direction of its axis. So let's look at it. These are the columns that is the linear element but these linear elements are called columns and uh, these are beams over here these beams are also linear structure so the feature here is this that they should not bend and they must reduce the load in the direction of its axis so this is the direction of the axis of the beam this is the axis for the beam and this blue line here this is also indicating the axis of the column so this line again here this arrow is indicating the axis of the column so these linear structure whether it's column or columns or the beams should not bend in what direction on the direction of its axis next line is the bulk of the column and the beam the bulk of column and beam section turns the direction of the forces by 90 degree so the bulk that is the cross section length width of the column or the beam should always turn the direction of the force by 90 degree means if the force is applied over the beam so the force must turn its carrying towards the column on 90 degree so the horizontal element with the vertical load makes 90 degree now the load which is coming over to the column again is it is making 90 degree with the beam beams as bulk active members undergo bending deformation it is because under the load its internal forces that is shear force and bending moment tries to reduce the load to stay safe so the condition is that the structure or any bulk structure must stay safe and to stay safe the internal forces of the structure must work so we are talking particularly about beam here so the internal forces generally the shear force or the bending moment on any cross section can be understood by looking at the arrows here the arrows which is the arrows which are coming inward is indicative of compression or the compression force and the arrows which are going outward they are indicative of the strain so due to constant stress and strain or the compression or, or the tension what we see is the buildup of internal forces and it happens naturally it can't be seen but once the load is applied over a beam the internal forces starts working and those internal forces are shear force and bending moment so these all 
compression and tension forces are shown here in the cross section. This is another sketch to indicate the working of the internal forces. Now the point is the farther the bulb, bulk means the beam section. Suppose this is the internal ductile detail of the beam. So overall we have cover here. So this cover could be around 20-25 mm. So it says the farther the bulb, the beam section from the neutral axis. So this blue line is indicative of neutral axis. The greater is resistance against the bending. So if any load is applied over this beam, then it will produce internal forces in the form of shear and the bending moment. So if we have this cross section higher, which is being shown by these arrows, means if you increase this or this or this or this, increment of the cross section that is the bulk gives you positive result in the form of resistance against the bending so if you want to make your beam bending proof or if you want to take higher load or if you want to resist against higher load then then the cross section or the bulk of the beam should be higher complete load of a building is transferred through the horizontal and vertical members to the ground so this is the slab over here and it has surface load suppose some objects are kept over it then we have a linear loads again some objects are placed in the linear fashion over the slab and uh, there could be again pointed load so this is a load or these are the loads pointed somewhere on the slab surface so after receiving the load it is being shown by these arrows here after taking the load this slab is again producing load or putting load over the beams which is in the form of the ring over here these beams again going to transfer load to the columns you can see over here through these arrows the load pattern or load tracing is being shown once these four columns which is shown here in this diagram taking load of the slab and the beams and the columns taking it to the footing footing is the part of the foundation or the substructure which is below the ground so the spread of the footing matters here higher the footing slab size greater the spread of the load over the ground underground once combined load of the slab, beams, columns and footings comes to the ground, now ground gives a reaction. So Newton's third law applies here to every action there is equal and opposite reaction. So the applied load over the ground is going to be reacted equally. This is very important to note. Now, if we look at whole structure, the load of the building getting transferred firstly through this particular horizontal member and then through vertical members to the footing or to the ground. As we know, majority of loads are vertical and a majority of uh, usable surface is horizontal. 
this is very important point to note that in this particular structure load carrying uh, elements are mostly vertical in the form of the columns and the surfaces which we use is being highlighted here these are the slabs which we generally use because to us horizontal surface is needed for putting objects putting anything over it so that we can use it even we walk over it we cannot use vertical elements particularly the narrow vertical elements so we make all these bulk structure or rigid structure so that we could use the horizontal surface by making multi-story building so we can again understand it that beams are used extensively to transfer vertical loads horizontally in a bulk active structure so this point says that these beams which are shown in the red color they are again being used extensively so that the vertical loads which was applied on the horizontal elements means the slabs these slabs will carry the vertical loads of the moving or non-moving or fixed objects over it it will uh, take the load to the beam and these beams are used everywhere all the columns are being connected with the beams why it is being connected because the load of the horizontal element that is the slab is taken to beams first not to the columns first so these beams are taking all the loads to the column and finally it is get, getting directed through these arrows to the ground so overall if you see the order of the load production and carrying starts from the slab goes to the beams and finally goes to the columns so in RCC rigid structure or bulk active structure we need to have huge numbers of vertical support structure those are the columns and horizontal support structure those are the beams because these two elements are actually taking the loads of the slabs which are coming say in this particular sketch it has four slabs so the combined load of the four slabs are being taken by the beams and the columns to the ground these horizontal elements lower surfaces are exposed to gravity so gravitational pull is too high here to resist or to make the balance we need to have extensive numbers of the columns and the beams now we'll talk about elements of bulk active building system first is the slab it can be one way slab two way slab flat slab coffered or waffle slab there's no discussion or the detailed discussion on slab here it's just to tell you that elements of bulk active system is the slab and then comes beams again it can be divided by its action simply supported beams continuous beams and cantilevered beams it is having third element as the columns it can be square rectangular column l and t types columns circular columns tied column spiral column or the composite column axially loaded 
column uni axial columns and finally it can have walls also so the walls generally should be load bearing walls that is the photo of frame structure so we can see clearly there are three levels three slabs are there so slab slabs are first laid like this the ductile details of this slab is here and then after we can see these beams beams these beams are indicated here so this is the image taken after the casting and this is the image taken once the ductile detail is done on the site this column or this column or other columns in this building are made like this so this is the ductile detail of the column again the column sizes the ties here or the rebars sizes depends on the load bearing criteria so this is the column after casting these hollow spaces are filled by the concrete so this was all about first part of the rigid structure that is bulk active structure thank you